what we're going to do today is we have two major types of scenarios. The first kind is an active violence incident where it simulates a suspect actively using force against people, uh, innocents within a structure, in this case a dorm room. So the officers were trained to respond to that and stop the violence immediately. The whole purpose is to create a very realistic training environment. We use different types of training tools such as ammunition that makes us sound like real guns. These are blanks and ammunition which fires a projectile that's full of a detergent or soap. These hurt when you get hit with them, but they do not cause serious physical injury or death. Hi, my name is Rick Deutsch, Rack County Police Department. I'm part of the Bicycle Patrol Unit. What I'm doing here today is at the 2600 block of Kimball. Doing some radar speed enforcement with the handheld LiDAR radar. I tend to see a lot of speeders. Bicycle unit uh, has been implemented to conduct uh, traffic enforcement and uh, general law enforcement in a manner that uh, traditional policing techniques out of a cruiser have fallen short of. So, well, the above average day would pretty much be call to call to call. You don't get uh, basically any free time. Uh, it's it's serious crimes. It's person felony crimes uh, more so than just regular misdemeanors. We deal with a lot. Real exciting day, we go 0 to 60 in about 3.2 seconds and it goes that way all day long. It, it's a good department to join. I mean, you've got your days in which you pretty much get to do what you want to do because it's a slow day and then you've got your days where you go call and call and call and call. Um, if, if you're interested in one aspect of this police department, um, you know, you can start out somewhere such as patrol. Um, and then through your years of experience, you can go to investigations, you can go to canine, you can go to your you know, bike unit if, that, uh, if that's what catches your interest. A lot of people look at the police department as just one thing, patrol officers, but in, in all regards to that, there's a lot more positions that, that you can be capable of, of uh, occupying. Control chaos. Just trying to keep people calm and, and have a friendly attitude towards law enforcement so when we have to deal with them later on, you know, <laughs> make things difficult for us. This is what we give it to you. Kind of walk around and just use your people skills. To be a good detective at this department, I think you need to be able to uh, be able to think on your feet. You need to be meticulous with detail. You need to be able to review statements and pick things out of that statement that leads you in a path to go on. Because people don't always tell the patrol officer everything there is about an investigation. So you need to be able to find that thing that's missing or find that thing that they've said that you can kind of hone in on and go from there off of it. A high percentage of my day Piles. I'll get my reports. Usually the reports come in about 10 o'clock to my inbox. Um, before that, I'm either catching up on things, making phone calls, um, get the reports, log them in, read them. Um, I'm required to do a history on all the people involved in my reports. That's if they've had any prior involvement. I think I'm well suited for this position because I have a caring nature and I really legitimately want to help the people that we serve. Um, sometimes that can be a downfall, but I, I think at the end of the day that makes it all worth it. This job is for anybody that um, has some tough skin because it, it, it can be tough, so it's not for everybody. Um, I would say this job is for um, people that have to be quick thinking, can work well under stress. Um, definitely multitasking is a, is a big requirement for the job as well. People call me. I automatically get an address. That's the most important thing is to get the address. To get the officers going to that address and that buys you some time because it takes time for the officer to get to the residence. I think it's a rewarding day if all of my officers made it home safely. Um, we've kept everybody on the street safe and did our jobs to the best of our ability. Offenders are brought in over here. Uh, police officer in process in the uh, police officer area. Okay. They're brought around and they're a pat down is done by the police uh, the correctional officer. Okay. Then they're told to have a seat until we can process them. The, the police officer that 
who make the arrests and then they're done, okay, whatever behavior that have, uh, they have, we're stuck with that. It can be really frustrating too if you're the only person up here and the phones are ringing, inmates are calling you, people are calling you on the radio, you have traffic through the back gate, the HP can come in, K-State, Fort Raleigh MPs. Well, there's, there's always something different going on where you're here in the jail and stuff. Different type of people you deal with that are brought in that the police officers arrest. Uh, never the same type of person uh, so you always got to be on your toes at all times because you don't know how they're going to act or not they got along with the police officers out on the street or we're not you know they're going to cause your problems once you get in here and then once you get them in here and you book them in they have a standard jail then the problems you have too and stuff is how they're going to get along being downside the jail facility oh the job for me and stuff is my the people i work with would be in the, you know anybody in the, in the department the people in records the people you know the police officers we work for and stuff that come through that door over there staff that I work for, uh -huh. uh, just knowing that, you know, that you're trying to change some of these people. I mean, the ones we try to change all the time is the juveniles that come in here that we have to book in. We try to tell them, so if you don't change your ways now, you're going to go end up being in prison. Some of the juveniles you get through, too, and some of them you don't. So one time they turn 18 years old, they're back in there committing crimes as adults. And then by that time, it's too late for them, so more likely they're going to end up in prison. But if you can change just one person, one person from coming in that door again, that's the ideal thing.